parents. Again, I welcome you all to the Looking After Each Other virtual gathering. My name is Helene Estrada. I am a member of the Manitoba FASD Coalition Board of Directors and the Regional Support of Success Through Advocacy and Role Modeling, or STAR. Um, and we are a federal FASD prevention program. And I have the honor of co-chairing this year's Looking After Each Other Committee together with the Zagate Jordan's principal team at Lake Manitoba First Nation. I would like to acknowledge our host community in Treaty Two lands, the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Assiniboine, Dakota and Dene peoples, and homeland of the Métis peoples in Manitoba. Also today, like Elder Florence said, today is Orange Shirt Day, and we all commemorate the residential school experience, acknowledge the healing journey of the residential school survivors and their families, and commit to taking action towards reconciliation. I would like to welcome you all. We are all here today sharing a common passion to promote dignity for all the individuals women, children, families, and communities impacted by alcohol and FASD in our province. Just a little bit of background about the looking after each other. In May 2014, a diverse group of Manitobans from different FASD community coalitions came together to create a vision and advocate for people with FASD and their families to be fully accepted and their dignities protected. The six to 10 year provincial dignity promotion project began in the hopes of breaking the stigma and systemic barriers for folks impacted by alcohol and FASD. On September 21st, 2014, an indigenous naming ceremony led by Elder Velma Orvis was held and the project received its name looking after each other. Annually, we have hosted in-person gatherings to get to know one another, to listen, learn, and share from each other. And every year, the gatherings became bigger and bigger, connecting more people who share the same passion, advocacy, and vision to promote dignity for people with FASD and their families. The current pandemic has not stopped us from connecting and continuing the work that we started. This year, we are so excited to virtually host this meeting to continue the conversations and engagement to promote dignity. The Zagate Jordan's Principal Initiative at Lake Manitoba First Nation is leading the very first virtual looking after each other gathering. And we have invited elders from different nations to share their teachings, knowledge and perspectives on this year's theme of building healthy communities. Please note that our elders teachings is being recorded and will be uploaded on the Manitoba FASD Coalition website for future viewing. Again, if I could please ask everyone to mute your Zoom microphone during our session. And I encourage you to use our chat, our chat box for questions, which will be answered after our elders teaching. At this time, may I invite Grandmother Mary Maitoyashing, the Zagate Jordan's Principal Manager from Lake Manitoba to introduce our elders. Mary, you can unmute yourself. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we oh, can. There. Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, 
I want to welcome everybody to our uh, virtual gathering this afternoon, and I'd like to say thank you, miigwech, to our grandmother, Florence Painter, who did the opening prayer for us. Um, thank you, Florence, miigwech. Uh, but I also have, um, I want to introduce our elders this afternoon. Um, Florence Painter, uh, I have her bio in front of me, and I'm just going to quickly read that bio. Um, Florence Painter, fluent in the Anishinaabe language and is rooted in the ancestral ways of the Anishinaabe people, teaches and mentors youth and others who want to learn the ancestral knowledge of the Anishinaabe, a lived experience of being a mother and grandmother and teaches the seven stages of life, possesses and shares her experience as a residential school student through the re reconciliation process, a retired classroom teacher and a former elder in residence for University of Manitoba. Uh, her experience uh, is uh, she sits on a, um, a council of elders, Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, a uh, female senior representative of the count elders council. As well, she sits on the Treaty Commission of Manitoba Swan Lake, Swan Lake First Nation Council of Elders, um, the Turtle Lodge Sagging First Nation Elder and Traditional Knowledge Keeper of the Anishinaabe. And she co teaches the rites of passage with gr other grandmothers, provides and contributes to other ancestral teachings and to the Anishinaabe language camps. She mentors and teaches the youth. Her background is, is in education, and she has a master's degree in education. So that's our grandmother, Florence Painter. I will also now introduce uh, Dr. Elder Dave Kershane, Honorary Doctor of Laws. Dave Kershane Nidani Akinana, Leading Earthman is a respected elder and knowledge keeper of the Anishinaabe Nation who has devoted his life to environmental stewardship. From lighting the sacred fire at the United Nations Earth Summit in 1992, to sharing the stage with spiritual leaders, including the Dalai Lama. Kershane's leadership has had a global influence. In 2002, he founded the Turtle Lodge International Center for Indigenous Education and Wellness, a, separate, a sacred lodge recognized internationally and by the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, uh, First Nations and Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, as one of the most important gathering places for Indigenous peoples in Canada. Individuals from around the world gather at the lodge to facilitate international, intergenerational knowledge, sharing language, revitalization, youth guardianship training and environmental solutions to climate change. Individuals from around the world, oh sorry, consider a trailblazer, Kershane has built alliances with institutions, academics and policy makers across the country. His work has been recognized with many prestigious honors, including the Inspire National Aboriginal Achievement Award in Culture heritage and spirituality, the Volunteer Manitoba Award for Outstanding Community Leadership, the International Award of Excellence, the Aboriginal Circle of Educators Award, and the International Indigenous Leadership Award. He is deeply respect, a respected elder, known for his ability to inspire dialogue and cross-cultural understanding between Indigenous knowledge keepers and Western trained scientists. His leadership is rooted in generosity, kindness, and a desire for peace and sustainability. Um, in recognition of the vital role that he has played in promoting peace, cultural understanding, and environmental sustainability, both in our province and globally. So with that, that's um, Elder Dave Kershane Jr. and uh, we welcome them as well. We for uh, accepting to, to do the teachings, the seven sacred teachings this afternoon uh, to our people. We watch.
So we will have um, grandmother Florence Fainter come on first, and then um, Dr. Dave Kershane will come after. So I guess Florence, you can go ahead and start. Um, I have never spent so much time thinking about this topic as I, as I have, I, you know, and I started to think, why am I having such a hard time? And maybe I came to a, a conclusion that it's, uh, it's um, something that uh, needs to be openly discussed. And it's something that um, I'm happy that we, we are having an open dialogue on, you know, as the, uh, as the people that work on the, uh, at the grassroots level. Uh, you know, I think it's important that uh, uh, the education component of the uh, AF, FASD is, uh, is critical. And you know, um, um, thinking about the presentation, there were a couple of things that, that came, and, and one of them was that uh, the uh, seven teachings in which we try and ground ourselves, and we try and uh, teach to our families. And the other one is um, as a, a person that went to a higher learning, my study was in the uh, seven stages of life. And I've been able to, um, to use the Western civilization of how they looked at, uh, at uh, childhood in general. And, and I believe that, uh, you know, when we talk about uh, Orange Day and we talk about uh, the adage, every child matters. I think with all the different initiatives that people are doing right across our land uh, is focused on the child. And we all work because we are after a betterment and a better narrative for our people. And in particular, when we're, uh, when we're dealing with the, uh, with the young people that can learn about FASD, fetal, fetal alcohol syndrome, and, and how it can affect uh, people later on in life. I, you know, and um, my experience has been with my family in terms of learning about the, uh, the uh, seven principles. And, and one that was taught to us uh, was respect, to have respect for everything and for everyone. And respect may have been the foundation of our, our teachings, you know, because then it hinges on uh, how you're going to listen and how you're going to uh, speak. Uh, respect is the foundation from my home base. And it may be different from other homes. Uh, it may be uh, uh, something that uh, people may have not had the same opportunity to experience as, as I have. And whatever I experience I have speaking on this it is based on mentorship that I had received from, uh, from people that I've now uh, passed on. And I went on a personal journey to find out about, about myself because if I know about myself and that I can certainly be in a position to, to help and mentor other people. I love your title, uh, you know, supporting supporting one another in the, uh, in the, uh, in the context of uh, how 
FASD is viewed generally. Uh, it, it's, a, it, it's a stigma, uh, but I think if we uh, begin to look at uh, some facts, and I think uh, some of the facts are that um, fetal alcohol syndrome is totally preventable. And I leave that to the people that educate our young about, uh, uh, about counseling and about things that they can learn uh, prior to become a, a parent. Um, we know for a fact that uh, it takes two people to, uh, to create that life, that gift of life that, uh, that is given to us as a people. And we know that uh, as a fact that our elders have always told us that um, our children are sacred and they are on loan to us. So we do the best we can to look after them and we provide the best that we can to, uh, to make them good people, you know, uh, and to be proud of who they are as Anishinaabe. And I think for me, uh, being a residential school survival survivor, uh, I thrive on the knowledge of my people. And I thrive on the knowledge of, uh, of what I have learned uh, later on in my, in my life and that I was able to, uh, to put on and to use as a guiding principle as I become, became a mother. I was a mother at a very young age, married right out of high school and um, had our, our first child. And our first child uh, uh, was a boy now in his, uh, uh, an adult, an old man in his 50s. And, um, uh, you know, based on that and uh, on my pregnancy, I, I know what I was told. I was told that uh, I had to look after myself really good. I had to uh, be mindful of the things that, uh, that, uh, could terrify my child. Uh, it was treated as a, as a human being at the start of conception. And I was told that whatever I took into my body, my child would be experiencing and eating and drinking the food that, uh, that I was feeding my body. And that is a fact that is the truth that uh, that I wanted to to share in in, um, in in trying to be humble in what it is that I have learned, and it is to uh, to speak the truth, to be honest, and to know how to do all of those in a, in a compassionate way um, because of the stigma that people will attach to a FASD. I had to go and do my own learning and I had an opportunity to, uh, to be able to uh, witness uh, the upbringing of, uh, of two children that were uh, uh, clinically diagnosed as having FA FASD. My sister, who is uh, uh, three years older than I am, uh, was a foster mother. And she brought and raised two, uh, two children. So I got to know these children and I got to, um, to learn what it takes to 
be a mother with uh, with children with uh, with challenging needs. And I think it's always good to remember that uh, children are all sacred and they all deserve to be treated with dignity and they all treated and and to be nurtured in the best way that we we can uh, know how to uh, look after children. As a young mom, I had no idea about parenting um, because I was more or less in the residential school setting when it was just totally opposite from a home that I was leaving that was uh, caring and showed me all the, uh, all the good things that I would need in my life. Uh, so I had a pretty good grounding on that. And whatever experiences that I, I have picked up along my journey are things that, uh, that I try and share to help people. Uh, you know that um, no family should ever be felt to be ashamed um, because it, it's just all part of life. We all had a had a, an opportunity to live in that fast life where uh, where drug and alcohol uh, were part of that uh, of going out celebrating and you know with uh, with friends and uh, and our uh, our immediate uh, bubbles. Uh, so it is with that in mind, you know, that um, uh, that I look at the seven teachings and that uh, um, respect for all of creation, respect for for all of the things that we know that were passed on to us from our from our families, our elders, our our people that uh, saw our difficult times that, that would come uh, with life, right? And with the introduction of uh, so many things to, to us as a, as a people from the other uh, lands, you know, uh, we didn't always know how to deal with, uh, with, with situations. So I'm happy that we can come together and, uh, and be able to, uh, to do that. Um, <clears throat> there's words that uh, go with uh, with respect, and it, it uh, it's mana manaji diwin. Uh, you know, it's it's being careful, being cautious uh, of how we speak, about how we say things, and in a compassionate and a very mindful way. So we were always told to uh, think before you speak. So I think that was a sign of respect. And uh, yeah, you know, um, uh, moving on to, um, to the uh, topic in terms of A FASD, uh, I think that um, uh, so many things uh, can be said about uh, about our seven teachings, our seven principles. Um, as a young mother, uh, you know, uh, I couldn't go to the theaters anymore um, because of the uh, potential of seeing a, a scary movie. And they would tell us, you know, or you're, you'll frighten your child. And we were also told to uh, be careful with our, our emotions and that whatever we were experiencing was being passed on, you know. And, and you can tell by the movement of your, of your child inside, and you know, when, when there may be an upset. Um, and we were also told, you know, that uh, 
that rapping was such a big part of our life. It was such a big part. And the reason that we were told to rap our children uh, were to uh, develop the ISO, uh, you know, the uh, uh, working against the muscle so they can have that strength and be able to develop the, uh, the, small, uh, the small muscles. Uh, and our feet were always put together so they wouldn't, they wouldn't kick one another and wake ourselves up in the middle of a sleep. And I know uh, with the children, my sister raised uh, the uh, smaller one was a, a, was a baby. And I noticed the uh, jerkiness, right? And uh, we were able to, uh, to do the wrapping, but also at the same time as, a, as an educator, I was getting some, uh, some information of, uh, of uh, workshops that were happening uh, to bring our people together so we can help one another uh, deal with, uh, with things like that, and things like uh, the shaking, uh, you know, the uh, movement of their uh, involuntary uh, uh, muscle movements, right? Um, and and uh, being able to provide the space in which they can watch TV, you know, giving them that little personal spot. So it was watching and mentoring my sister from what I would gather from the outside and bringing it to the home. And as a, as a, a grandmother now, I do have children and I do have uh, grandchildren that, uh, that I worry about. I, I know, so uh, I watch for uh, for symptoms of what I had witnessed as a as a, a visitor to my sister's house. Uh, these children are uh, are now adults, and they're doing pretty good in life. They're doing pretty good in life. So we know uh, uh, we can do well helping one another. Um, the other teaching is. Um, you know, sagi widi, sagi sagi widi din, and that's love. And to show love is to uh, to care for uh, people. Uh, you know that uh, love can um, can make us do our best for who we have to look after. Uh, you know, and we. Uh, we tell our, uh, our grandchildren from a very young age how much we love them. And we love them uh, by uh, showing and picking up some of the teachings that were told to us. And one of them was that um, uh, children have a spirit name. We all carry a spirit name and that spirit name is born and given when that child is conceived. And it's up to us as parents to go in search of that name for our child because it's already there. It just needs to, uh, to be gathered from, uh, from a person that may have that ability to uh, to seek out that name, okay? Uh, so that that's that's one thing that uh, I know that uh, we do and uh, help them to uh, feast their names, I, you know. And I and I've had children brought over to my home as an elder to uh, to kind of look at, and I know one of the strategies that uh, uh, that we used. To uh, to deal with the uh, with the uh, uh, ones that were brought here, not not totally related to us, but every child is like a grandchild to us, uh, you know. So we look at all of them as uh, as sacred beings, and we all 
love them the same way that uh, that we would show love and care to our our own our own flesh and blood. Uh, you can bring your stroke to their arms to kind of give them give them that sense of security and we also call out their name to quiet their spirit down um, so those are, are th two things that uh, i know that we do under uh, under love uh, and uh, and i guess one of the uh, important ones was for for me to love myself first and foremost so I can give love to others. And you know, uh, uh, I've been a, a witness to that. I've been uh, the recipient of uh, so much love. You know, when my, uh, when my granddaughter leaves the house, you know, you know it's always uh, uh, with love that she'll come and give me a hug and uh, wish me a good day. Yeah, I know. So we we greet one another uh, and say goodbye to one another with uh, with love and hugs. And I think love is one of the uh, of the mo most helpful in terms of a, an expression of an emotion, right? So it's important that uh, that we do that. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the other ones are. Uh, bravery and that uh, you know it's uh, uh, being able to do things in in, uh, in a way that you can do stuff and that's with a lot of a lot of courage and it takes a lot of courage to be able to uh, to do what we have to do on behalf of, of all children yeah I know and, and not uh, isolate anyone um, and to to know all of this is to uh, to be knowledgeable and to uh, have the wisdom to know the difference when we need help and we need to reach out to other people, just like you have reached out to us as elders. We encourage our families to reach out for that information that is so readily available and i think my uh dying way for the uh, opportunity to come and share i know that uh, uh we're limited in what in in the time uh, um, but just remember that and that uh, the uh, seven guiding principles uh, can never lead you in the wrong directions and with that i want to from my bottom of my heart i want to say thank you and i want to encourage each and every one of you that uh, that it is important that we work together to um, to bring dignity and all the seven teachings into practice in all of what we do uh, we do it with compassion kindness and with sincerity Miigwech, Elder Florence. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, um, Grandmother Mary, would you like to um, invite Elder Dr. Dave to start? Oh, hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, sorry about that. I didn't know that I was muted, but uh, yeah, thank you, Florence. Uh, 
Uh, Grandmother Florence Baker for sharing your wonderful wisdom and knowledge. We, we thank you. So now we will now introduce uh, uh, Dr. Elder Dave Krishan to, um, to share his wisdom and his knowledge uh, about our, our topic this afternoon, the seven sacred teachings and you know, in our um, afternoon session on uh, fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, FASD. Uh, miigwech. Thank you, Dave. Go ahead. Thank you. Mary. Mojo anin. Dine magnetic. Migani aki. Dine. This is because. Dine. 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 Sagi. Donji. Dine. 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 Si va bach to an ejigi gitad wench te gozi. Mi gach minan dina. Va de bendeng et madne de mi gre ejemanit. Igi mi na ke ina nishna be kena ge go. Chayat mi we minu pe madne de. Av chiksha jwen da go zige ina nishna be. Mi gach ke dina no komes me te ke. We can make go and not to go to Dago and have a disposal in them. We can meet young and in one, we can get in a touch on Dago's young. We can run the bench kick young, so she has a canoe young honey. When again in a touch of bus young mocking. We got scanned an anime song she took, find a beer, pens and dunning. Wabba no shower no, we got beyond no forget me. When you go here, I can give you all the things you want to listen to. If you reach out to listen to, I can give you the same code. 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 My dear relatives, you know, first of all, let me thank my colleague Florence for, for the prayer that she offered for us to, to be together this afternoon. There is nothing more important for indigenous people than to always offer words of gratitude to that higher power when we call the Great Spirit, the Creator. As a people, we have always had that faith and belief in that higher power because this is where we have received what we consider the higher intelligence that is found in, in the spiritual world. And whenever the elders speak on our behalf, it is always an expression of humbleness. It is always an expression of love that they have for life, an expression of love that they have for, for all of life. That is why it is important that we never overstep our duty and responsibilities to we'll always offer acknowledgement to the influence of that spirit that we need so badly in our life today. And I know that we've been asked to, to share, you know, the, the teaching that, that we have uh, been given in this part of the world. The seven teachings or teachings or laws that, that have always acted as a foundation <clears throat> of how we should live and behave as human beings. But I want to give a little bit of perspective in terms of who we are as, as Anishinaabe people. Not far from here is a very special place, a sacred place where our, our ancestors had gathered for thousands of years. And we call it Manitoape, where which translates to where the Creator sits. Manitoape is one of our most sacred sites. And it's no mistake that it's located in the heart of Turtle Island, the continent of North America. Our sacred site of Manitoape is acknowledged every time we say the name of the province of Manitoba. As the first peoples of this land, we have many creation stories across across our nations and they reflect our origins as a people born from the spirit and the land. We have originated here 
on Turtle Island that we call Mother Earth, where the Jemini too places. And is understood in our creation stories that every human being is born with a spirit, a divine shining blow light that is in each and every one of us, that is in each and every living entity that has been born from the earth itself carries the essence of that shining blue light that offers our identity and how we should be. As a people, we have evolved with a knowledge and understanding of original instructions that we were given on how to be who we are as Anishinaabe people. And there are many teachings that we, we have as a people that I know can help the whole world to come to greater understanding of our existence and our real purpose in our world. Today, we have a global problem of a health crisis. There is mental illness, there is a major concern in the world. We, we see so much uncertainty, confusion, and we see it in much of what we are witnessing in today's world, the current pandemic that we are in the midst of. We see a serious issue of climate change that the road of climate change is really because we have not followed the original instructions that we were given in how to live and behave. We see political chaos in having leaders that are so delusional. They have no morality. There's no moral uh, principles that they, they lay as the foundation of their leadership. We see such a great loss of of basic values that reflect the dignity that we should have for each other. We're living in a world where there is so much racism, so much hatred, that society today is in a lot of trouble. And as the indigenous peoples, we have been given a dream, a dream that is inclusive to all people and to all life. We have evolved here as a people with the knowledge and understanding that we have been given the responsibility to, po to put forward a leadership on how we can find our true purpose as human beings. As the first peoples of this land, we are the true leaders of our homeland. And that cannot be taken away from us because it has been confirmed in our stories that we are the true leaders of our homeland. And that leadership that I, I talk about, that I have heard within the lodges of our people, talk about a leadership that is about sharing and that is about giving. Ever since the arrival of our brothers and sisters from other parts of the world, my ancestors always, always treated our brothers and sisters as relatives. And we gave, we shared everything that we could so that they could also survive. And it's unfortunate that today what we see reflected is that there is very little of the original land base that our people had, had enjoyed in freedom to be able to move across the land to share in the abundance of the land and today we are marginalized within our homeland with the little boxes that we call a reservation and we are expected to to create survival as a people on a minimum land base and also supported with social type programs that has nothing to do with our spiritual survival as a people we look at the challenges that Native people face today. And today we talk about the impact that alcohol 
is, has done and continues to do to our people. And it was one of the first ways that the new people that came upon our land harmed the people by giving them this poison that would destroy their lives, destroy their families, and destroy their memory of their original instructions that they were given in how to live and behave as an individual and as a community. Today we see the impact of those attempts to destroy us. Alcohol was one of those elements that were used to destroy us. Then we have the institutions that were that were enforced by the government to assimilate us and continue to use those forces of legislation to keep us oppressed as a people that does not allow us to exercise our freedom to be who we are. Our sovereignty has been taken away by legislation. And we look at the impact of that oppression and we see things like we see today with this symptom of FASD that has devastated so many of our children. And we see today, you know, the amount of children that are in foster care. It's unheard of in our past societies to ever let go of the duty and responsibility of taking care of our children because we had an extended understanding of taking care of our children. The community was responsible for all children. And what we have now is an environment of dependency that has removed that responsibility that the Creator had given us as a people to take care of our own children. It saddens me to know that there are institutions today that have replaced the boarding school system, what we call foster care, that they've somehow rationalized that Indians cannot be responsible that Indians can't take care of their own, which is not true. That is not true. We are more than capable of accepting our responsibilities to offer the vision that would help us to restore ourselves and bring a better health for our communities. And I, I support the focus of looking after each other because that is what it's all about, is that we must learn to reach a level of kindness and compassion and empathy for everyone, for those that have been, that we find on, on the street that are homeless. They are just as human as any one of us. Those that suffer from addictions have a spirit that has not been touched by addiction or alcohol. The spirit within each of us remains pure in spite of what we may do to our bodies and our minds, the spirit always remains pure. There is no, there is nothing in this world that man can do to destroy the innocence of that spirit that we are all born with, that, that, that carry us. It is the spirit that offers our, our identity. We have a spiritual identity crisis globally because man has overstepped the most important part of our element that we refer to as the spirit. And the elders would say in the language, the most important element that we have that reflects our existence and our humanness is our spirit. It is the spirit that carries the memory of where we have come from. We have come from the spiritual realm and we will return back into that spiritual world when our journey has been completed here in this human in this human world. But being a human being comes with duties and responsibilities. And we all made a sacred covenant with our great creator that to be given the gift to come and live this human life. We made one promise to our great creator and that was to bring love and peace into this world while we have failed miserably. Because we've attached our existence to material life. We've attached meaning to our life by, by having a material life, that material becomes more important, that the spirit is left out in understanding 
life itself. Indigenous people have a lot to give. Indigenous people have to, a lot to share in spite of this marginalization that we continue to live in in our homeland. We know that the Creator has a great plan for us, always did. But one day the people will know who Indigenous people are by the very fact that I am being allowed with my colleague Florence to share our identity. Who is Anishinaabe? Who am I? I am not a Canadian. I am Anishinaabe, born from a sovereign people that have been here for many, many thousands of years. And I will never give up my sovereignty, my identity in who I am as a very beautiful people that we really are. Our children need to hear the beauty of who they are. They have to stop being told that they have to be someone else in order to belong. We have to stop them. We have to stop assimilating them into a society that is destroying the world. We have to stop assimilating them into ideologies and concepts that have no understanding of what sacredness is all about. We have to stop educating them in a way that denies them of their identity, that denies them of their language, that denies them of their ceremony, that denies them of having maximum opportunity to be on the land, to feel the land. As a people, we have all the protocols that are needed to help anyone to find their way back home, to find their way back to the land where the real healing really has to happen. The land will heal us. Mother Earth will heal us. And how many of us take the time to go to the land and to seek that healing that Mother Earth can give all of us? to clean our minds from all this, all these concepts and all ideologies that have nothing to do with supporting and complementing life and complementing the laws of natural that Mother Earth, you know, is there to offer us a direction on how we can have a good life. As a people, we have much to share. And it is in these times that that I know that we are in a fulfillment of prophecy. I follow those prophecies because like any other group of people on, on planet Earth that we call Mother Earth, that we were given visionaries and prophets of our own that would help guide us through some really difficult times. That one day we would find our rightful place in our homeland in the midst of all our brothers and sisters that have arrived on our homeland. Our duty and responsibility as a people is to offer the rules of conduct for those relatives that have arrived on home, our homeland, how to take care of each other, how to take care of the land, how to ensure that, that the recognition of the original people is acknowledged, that we are the true leaders of our homeland, and that we offer the rules of conduct on how we should live and behave as, as human beings. The children today that suffer from the symptom of FASD need a lot of love. They need a lot of kindness because something has been removed from, from their ability to think properly. And they need more love than ever to be respected and to be understood. That is the way of life of indigenous people, to show kindness and empathy for everyone. No matter where they walk within that circle of life, everyone deserves the right of dignity, the right to be respected or whatever and however we find ourselves in that circle of life. These seven teachings that we have been given, I would not do justice today to try to share those teachings in a way that I would like to because time does not allow me to really express those teachings in a way that should be heard within the environments of our people, which is in the lodges of our people. I have seen these teachings taken and that most people have intellectualized those teachings. Those are living laws. Those are living teachings that we're to be guided by with the animals that represent each of those teachings. And I would suggest to, to those that are listening here this afternoon that you allow yourself the opportunity to come within our environment of our lodges and come in here to, share, to hear the teachings in ceremony because that is the respect that these teachings need is the respect that is found in the ceremonies that offer acknowledgement of the sacredness of those teachings itself. And that is what I would propose here this afternoon as I speak to each of you, 
but rather to raise the concern that we're in a lot of trouble. And it, it's not only about one people having all the answer. We all have the answer within each of us, that we have to go within ourselves that, hold, that holds the truth of what we are looking for, because it is, it is within our reach by simply going within ourselves where we find the spirit that guides us in our life. And this is what indigenous people have always understood. They've always understood that there is a, there's another world that carries a higher level of intelligence that we haven't got the mental capacity to be able to understand the fullness of the great spirit. The best we can do to understand who the great spirit is to feel it in our heart, to feel it in our spirit. The source of life that we have been given has come from that higher source that we call the great spirit. We, are, we have entered a time of great change and great opportunity as human beings. The earth is changing and prophecy had foretold that, it, that Mother Earth would give birth to a new life. It's happening now because we can see the forces of nature that represent the labor pains that Mother Earth is going through in order to bring forward the new life that we need to support. And we begin with each of us in understanding that we all have original instruction as the human beings to be able to support the dream and the vision, the great vision of the great creator that we were placed in this vision that we call life. Our old people have made reference many times and they say, the creator gave us everything that we needed in order to have a good life. I don't need to go anywhere out to go and find that life because that life of understanding is within me and it is within each and every one of you that hold the knowledge of the memory of your own, of your own existence, of your own creation. Where did you come from? Why have you come here? What are you doing in order to fulfill the call of the creator? What are you doing to listen to the call of the land as the land is calling us home to come in here to teachings of Mother Earth wants to share with us through the animals, the plants, the water, the trees. They're all willing to teach, but we never take the time to offer that kind of respect that is needed in order to receive the teaching that the land is willing to offer. I, uh, I'm thankful for, for this opportunity here this afternoon that someone had the vision of inviting Florence and myself here this afternoon. Florence is a, is a beautiful grandmother that deserves the full support so that she can share more of her teachings to the young people. And what our challenge today as the knowledge keepers of this land is that we find that there's very minimal support to acknowledge the work that the knowledge keepers have to do and we do it without expecting anything but rather the love that we have for the people but why should the, the knowledge keepers be put in a minimum situation and not given the due respect of the knowledge that they have and we need to see more value in the teachings that the grandmothers have to share there is a there is a law that our people remember that we should be following and it's called uh, the, the law for the children which translated it means teachings that are given to a child that last forever that can only be given by a woman and that extends all the way to the original woman that we call mother earth that holds the teaching on how we should be treating life yes we have a lot of work to do yes we have a lot of challenges but until we can find that spirit of being able to work together and putting the knowledge keepers of our nations in the forefront of leadership, then we're not going to get very far. You know, today we, we struggle to try to add voice, you know, to the many challenges that we face in today's world. And we know without a shadow of a doubt that it will only be love that can change the world. It will only be love that we will become clear in our mind and our heart to see the sacredness and to feel the sacredness of life itself and to see you know that shining blue light that comes from the core of mother earth that 
she has always been there unconditionally to be a full expression of what love is all about. It's the land that carries the essence of that unconditional love. And all we have to do is return that love to the land, not by ripping it apart, tearing it apart, and extracting things that we can eat or drink, and yet it continues for the sake of an, for a, a, an ideology of economics. We must have economics in order to survive. That is not true. That is not true. If we look back and reflect on our people and how they existed for tens of thousands of years, their currency was kindness, kindness. And it is said that it will be the people of the heart that will change the world. And my question here today to each of you, are you a person of the heart? And that's a question that individually that we need to answer ourselves. So thank you, miigwech, for being able to give me this time, miigwech. Thank you so much, Elder David. Now we would like to open the virtual floor for any questions um, our participants may have for our elders. I invite everyone, um, if you would, if you have any questions um, or suggestions or words of inspiration that you would like to share, um, you can unmute yourself. Ah, bonjour. Uh, just uh, a little bit of advice to the group. Uh, both Florence and Dave uh, shared a lot of information. I uh, do something similar. I work for the Interlake Eastern Regional Health Authority and I also provide cultural awareness to uh, 3200 staff. But one of the things I always pose to all the participants in any session I offer are these words. Everything you always wanted to know about Indians, but were afraid to ask, today's your opportunity. So that's all I wanted to share. Thank you so much. Do you mind uh, introducing yourself, Robert? <laughs> I thought I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, my uh, English name is Robert. My family name is Maytoyash, and I'm actually the lesser half of Mary. No, um, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, uh, we're from the Lake Manitoba First Nation. I, uh, I also introduced my spiritual name, which is Strong Standing Red Buffalo. Um, I work for the uh, Interlake Eastern Regional Health Authority as their Aboriginal HR Development Officer, and I provide cultural awareness training for our staff. That's my day job. I'm very involved. Uh, I am on Anishinaabe. Don't let the packaging fool you. I had no say in that matter. <laughs> Um, I'm fluent in the language, um, former leader of my community. Um, I firmly believe everything that the elders have shared because that's been my life as well. And that's, yeah, that's all I have to say. Miigwech. Miigwech, Robert. Um, yeah, we would like to invite everyone if they have um, questions, please come forward. This is your opportunity. Again, echoing what... Um, uh, Robert had said. I think what I'm going to come away with today, hi, it's Dawn. Um, hi, Dawn. Hi. Um, when uh, Dr. Elder Dave said um, their currency was kindness, I don't know that um, common, simple, humanitarian element seems to be really missing today in, in almost everything we do. So I'm gonna, that's gonna be my new mantra. And thank you for, for pointing that out again. <laughs> thank you, Dawn. Maybe a question is like, what is your takeaway from um, what we have heard from the elders? Um, they talked a lot about uh, the sacredness of life and um, the value of um, 
the mothers and the life that they breathe um, to the babies and also the value of um, love and kindness and gentleness. So does anyone have like any um, inspirational takeaways? Um, you can feel free to um, share with us. Where is Turtle Island? Is this Dawn? Hi, Dawn. Yeah. Hi, where is Turtle Island that Elder Dave was speaking of? Elder Dave, would you like to answer that? Yeah, Turtle Island is in reference to the continent of North America. You know, if one really looks at the continent, it's kind of like the shape of the turtle. But there's a lot of significance as to why you know, people have referred to our continent as Turtle Island. And it falls in line with the, with the prophecy of our people that it will be here in our homeland, that it would be the beginning of the revealing of the truth. And that's one of the teachings and laws of our people is, is the law of truth, which is uh, represented by the, by the grandmother turtle. So it has a lot of symbolic significance in terms of, you know, our people have called us this part of the world that we, we live in, you know, is uh, Turtle Island, North America, simply. Thank you for that. Thank you, Elder Dave, and thank you, Don, for that question. Do we have anyone else? Um, wanted to share some few uh, some few words um hi i'm molly, hi, I, have molly. A question, I have a question for robert matuyashi yeah you have gotten his attention <laughs> robert um I need um i'm a ojibwe native woman and i want to ask you um this word sacred, like today, um, with today's, like everybody, nothing is sacred anymore. Like, what is that word sacred? The best way I guess I could explain the term sacred is something that is a very high value to ourselves as individuals, to ourselves as nations, to ourselves as people upon the earth. Um, something that sustains and supports life. Something that reminds us of the significance of our existence. All of these things could be considered as being sacred. Something that you should not disrespect or um, abuse or take advantage of, uh, by doing that, uh, you're, you're disrespecting the sacredness of all that. All of creation in the indigenous worldview is considered as being sacred. So again, we're showing that reverence for all things that we recognize that help support us as human beings. That's the best way I could answer that. Thank you very much. And that's a very beautiful explanation. Thank you, Robert. I think that's everything. Um, Mary, I would like to call on Mary um, to share some final words before we conclude this session. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> well, I, uh, I guess I, I, want, I really want to thank our elders, our knowledge keepers, for coming on this afternoon and sharing, again, you know, their words of wisdom. And, uh, you know, one of the things is that sometimes, you know, it's uh, um, really important to share the truth of our true history and uh, working 
in, in my community working with children, um, I guess on a daily basis, well, not now because of the COVID pandemic that, that's happening that we're all being affected by. But there's, always, there's also something for us to learn and, you know, to be with family, to be with our relatives during this time that we need to look at this um, COVID pandemic as, as a teaching that, uh, you know, we have an opportunity uh, to do the teachings and to teach our young ones, as the elders have mentioned, as um, Elder Dave has mentioned, as uh, um, our grandmother Florence has mentioned, you know, we have that opportunity right now. Um, you know, a, a question was asked about uh, what, uh, what does that mean? Nobody um, respects the, the sacredness of life anymore. And, and further to that is that, you know, a long time ago, because we had the language, and like I'm very fortunate and lucky to have the language that, you know, we, we didn't have um, those uh, English terms as we do today, and it's very difficult to translate our, our language in, into English because, you know, a lot of times it just doesn't do justice. But further to that, we, because of the values and the teachings that we had, um, from our ancestors, from our, our grandmothers, our grandfathers of long ago, that they mentored those ways, our ancestral ways, those teachings, and that um, we just knew because we, we were, we inherit those teachings. We, those were, that was how we were rooted. We, we just knew because of the way that they carried themselves and the way that they they walked upon the earth, um, the way that they respected everything, like all life. So, you know, and these are teachings and, you know, I want to uh, reflect back to what Elder Dave has talked about that, you know, for me, uh, my, the majority of my life, I guess, has been learning and uh, from, from the earth, from our elders. Um, you know, and again, you know, to do the seven sacred teachings in one hour, an hour and a half, again, and he is correct in saying that we have to go on the land, we have to go to the lodges, we have to go to our elders, we really need to um, um, work with each other, uh, work together, um, and, and learn from our elders that carry those teachings and, and that wisdom. So, you know, I, I just really am um, grateful and thankful that we were able to hear uh, from our elders. And, and I want to thank our, our grandmother, Florence, uh, for, for being there and, and sharing. Like, she carries a life experience. She has lived a life experience. She's gone through that era of the residential school. Um, so she has a lot to, to offer. Uh, as do our elders, uh, you know, Elder Dave, like he has a lot to offer. He, uh, he, ha he has lived a life experience as well. And uh, so, but anyway, my battery is going to die. Uh, I want to thank all of you. And I think we should do a closing prayer. And we would ask, um, again, maybe uh, Dave can do the closing prayer this time. <laughs> If he could do the, the honor, and again, thank you to all of you. Miigwech. Thank you, uh, Mary. You know, and I don't want to overstep the grandmother, so I, I, I want to acknowledge her for, you know, doing the opening prayer. And of course, in, in our way, you know, there never is a, a goodbye. You know, we always say when we're going to leave each other for a while, we go, we go, we will see you again. But let me just conclude again in offering uh, gratitude to our great creator for the blessings that we receive every day and for bringing us together here today you know, for, for being able to share and to, you know, to join in, uh, in these efforts as we try to create a better world for our children. And I, I, I know that, you know, this is a lot of is a lot of challenge. It's a big challenge for all of us. But we can't do it without the help of spirit. And today, you know, as we bring close to our gathering here today, let me say me which we know to go. 
ምንኩ ደሬን ግባጅ ዝም ልጅ ምንኩ ከይን ወጂ ሚነ ተነሽ ማበ ወንን ገበን ሽፍ ማብ ምንበጽ ገንደና ኮመስ ምገይ ወጂ ሚሻ ገኒ ነው ታኒ ጫያ አንቺ ትማት ዘን ምንሽ ወንደ በመሽክት ወሽከጅ ክላማው ያን አንን ገኒ ነው ተወጪ ዘናንዳ ጉዚያ ያኔ ሸቺ ጅንጀጊ ያን ገኒ ነው ጀናስ ስክ ማን ሚ ወድ ማድ ሚ ማ ሚ ይበጽ ከእንደና ነው ምሽም ሽፈት ምን ነው ይሽ ስካው ያን ምና ነው ወይ ቢየ ገጂ ነው ወደ ነው ሻው ነው ኢዳ ቢያ ነው ሰጀት ነው ኢንቨስት ኪፒ ዘን थैंक यू वेरी मच टू ऑल ऑफ यू विश यू ऑल द बेस्ट Thank you so much uh Elder David on that note that concludes our first looking after each other virtual gathering we are very privileged to listen to Elder Florence Painter and Elder Dr Dave Kreshain thank you so so much from the bottom of our hearts uh for providing us with teachings about the sacredness of life and the power of kindness and love and we appreciate your gentle words of encouragement and inspiration to help all of us here um support our work um in the FASD community and be the louder voice to those who struggle to speak out um all of us here today kindly receive your blessing to continue the good work that we have started and put our hopes dreams and visions of healthier families and communities in action um i would also like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who joined us um mark your calendars for the next virtual elders teachings um it'll be on october 21st and november 18th from 1 to 2:30 p.m. i'll just copy paste uh that information on our chat box right now um to register or if you have any more questions please email kim at coordinator at fasdcoalition.ca um if you are interested to know more about the looking after each other project and other manitoba fasd coalition activities please visit our website at www.fasdcoalition.ca and you can all also follow us on facebook manitoba fasd coalition on the search box um the membership to the coalition is free and is open to anyone with an interest in FASD um and to get involved just look and find the how to get involved tab um and you can complete the membership form there on our website uh we invite everyone of you to share your ideas your expertise and your experiences the looking after each other subcommittees and we have three of them um we have the common language subcommittee that helped create the FASD language guide um the um and we have the research subcommittee that is helping us with uh the best practices in prevention and intervention of FASD to promote dignity and last but not the least we have the popular education subcommittee that helps develop materials events and projects and creates avenues for sharing messages promoting dignity around the topic of FASD so if you're here with us please share this word around and for all the planning and content of our virtual looking after each other gatherings i would like to extend our big thank you to grandmother mary may toyashing and the Zagate Jordan's principal team at Lake Manitoba with support from Ken Lamaro, Shannon Foster, Debbie Seelin, Twyla Gilroy and Kim Wozniak from the Manitoba FASD coalition. Again, my name is Helena Estrada and see you again next time. Thank you all for joining. Bye. Bye. See you later. Take care everyone. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Thank you. I can stay on if you would like to debrief. <laughs> <laughs> We have a meeting tomorrow. <laughs> okay. We'll meet tomorrow.
Again, thank you so much, Grandmother Florence, and I hope to see you face to face soon. Bye. I don't know how to end the meeting now. <laughs> okay. I'll do it. <laughs> okay. I'll do it at my end.